Hello. Oh, hi. Good evening. I'm Teresa Waldorf. And I'm Allie Fradkin. And we were invited to MC, and we're so glad you're here. Yes, thank but you. But before we start for this Spark Showcase tonight, Allie here is going to tell us why the arts are important to her. Yes, I am. Um, so I am a part of band and also theater in my high school, and I've been a part of those two programs since I was in elementary school. And I'm very thankful to the arts because it's a great way to meet new people and also be able to express yourself in ways that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. So I'm thankful that other people also have this opportunity. Awesome, thanks Allie for sharing that little anecdote. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, SPARK, and, and SPARK is all caps with an exclamation point, so we decided earlier, whenever we say that, we were going to go, SPARK, <laughs> but we've decided against it now. SPARK? But SPARK <laughs> is a national Spark. partner with John F. Oh, am, are you orange or am I orange? I'm orange, okay, but go. if you want to be orange, it's okay. No, you be um, orange. <laughs> it's a national partner with John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts through the Ensuring the Arts for Any Given Child Initiative. SPARK! works to ensure equitable access to the arts for all Missoula County public school students. This is the fifth year that SPARK has been at Kennedy Center, any given child site, and the third year of full program implementation. What you'll experience tonight is just a glimpse of the amazing art opportunities happening in classrooms throughout the year. The school year, all first through eighth grade students attended an art enhancement event, and in addition, to classrooms starting at kindergarten and extending through high school, over 700 additional hours of arts access have been provided to students through over 100 arts residencies. All of this happens through community partnership with Missoula County Public Schools, the University of Montana, the City of Missoula, and over 30 local artists and arts organizations. We hope you enjoy the show. This presentation is being recorded by Missoula Community Access Television. So smile, you're on candid camera. Just kidding. As part of a media assistant grant donated to the organization by MCAT. And now, our first act. African Music and Dance with Unity Dance and Drum and C.S. Porter students, Tarn Reem. Thank you. <laughs> who are in the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade represented tonight. And Miss Mindy Hammett, who is um, the coordinator, teacher, super human woman, I love her, um, also has been part of this. Um, so the song we started out with is a song that comes from what country, Felix? Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. 
Yeah, and it's from, it's, <laughs> it's from the Shona ethnic group, and uh, I think that you'd like to introduce what, what the song means, the words to the song mean. Father, make my lips the instrument of peace. Yeah, good, thank you. So the song literally has marimba. Who can tell me what a marimba is? You know what our marimba is? Anybody in the audience? Can you raise your hand and tell me what our marimba is? These guys can. It's like a xylophone, right? Show me. Show me what, how you'd play it. Yeah. Show me how you'd play it. Nice. Good. Yeah, that's exactly right. You play it with mallets. So marimba is an instrument. So Father, teach me so that my lips may be an instrument of peace. So the next piece we're going to do for you is um, a dance piece. And... Um, I'm wondering what the name of the dance is. It's called Sinte. <laughs> and who can tell me what ethnic group Sinte comes from? Nalu. Ah, yes. Will you say that once more? Nalu. <laughs> the Nalu ethnic group um, and the country that it comes from? Guinea. Guinea. So Guinea is in what part of the continent? Of course, West Africa. Because <laughs> Tarn likes West African dance. Um, and then this dance actually also has um, another element, like it's done for certain occasions. A lot of dances are done for certain occasions. This is a traditional dance, and the traditional use for this dance was what? Celebration. Yeah, for celebration. So we figured it was a good dance to do for this occasion. Um, and the other piece of this is that um, this dance was actually traditionally done not with the drums, but with an instrument called? Cream. 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 <laughs> good. And will you guys show me the cream, please? It's over here, and we'll have, we'll, that'll be featured as part of this piece. But the cream is this log slit drum here on the corner. So. All right, you guys ready to dance? Let's go! <laughs> Thank you. 
CCS Porter students. And now I'd like to welcome to the stage Jacqueline Snow, Spark Director, and Karen Kaufman. So I'm Jacqueline Snow, and... And I'm Karen Kaufman. <laughs> um, I'm the Spark Director, and I feel so honored to be a part of this program for the past two years. Um, a lot of what we're showing tonight is about what we do and how we do it. So um, these performances that you're seeing with these students are not really things that they have rehearsed for performance. These are things that they're doing to learn. It's part of their learning process. And so it's really exciting for them to come and get to do this kind of a thing, but it's not the usual. Usually this is happening in the classroom along with their other content area. Um, I'm so glad to see all of you here tonight. Part of what this is, is a community collaboration. And so I think it's so fitting that we're here with the community now. And there are so many people that this requires to make this happen. And so thank you for being here and for celebrating with us. And I just want to talk about one more aspect of what we do with Spark, and that's the why. Because I feel like um, you can know that there are, there are all these hours happening, there are all these residencies happening, there are all these standards being met, but there's a deeper why that makes this initiative and this work really important to me. And that is the things, the things that it does for the students beyond just, um, you know, getting, getting a science standard better, that's great, that's awesome, and I'm so glad it does, um, remembering the vocabulary words and all of those wonderful things, but I've had students tell me I was really anxious about coming to this class before we did this theater residency, and now I have friends and I look forward to coming to this class. That's why it's important. I've had kids that, um, that wouldn't do work, didn't really find any motivation or anything, and then after the residency, they became straight A students. There could have been a lot of reasons, but that was the turning point for that student. Um, and there have been students that have just said, school is hard for me. It's hard for me to come. I struggle a lot. But when we do art, I, I get it. And I love it. And I have fun. And, and those things are really important. It's really important for every kid to find a place of belonging. And, and art brings that. And so that's a big why for me that this is so important. So thank you so much for supporting this work and for supporting Spark. And Karen is um, one of the people that I am happy, happy all the time to work with. She is wonderful, and I got to be in the graduate program, the Creative Pulse, with her, and that's how we met. And um, she, she, through the university and just through herself personally, has been so supportive of this. And she's going to talk a little bit about um, what she would like you to know about Spark. Yeah, it's been a great privilege to be part of this collective impact project since the beginning. Um, this is the first time I've ever experienced a collective impact project, and it's extraordinary to be part of so many factors, so many sectors from the community coming together in this way. And thank you to the Wilma Theater and the Chakotas for allowing us to be here. That's just one of many examples. Um, one of the, there's a couple things I wanna, I've, I've noticed, um, I spend time going through the, the schools. I love to walk into a school and peek into a classroom and see what's going on. And um, one, of the, one of the things that is lesser known or isn't discussed very much is the professional development that's taking place for a classroom teacher when an artist comes into their classroom. It's like on-the-job training. And many of these teachers are able to continue the work, which is part of what interests us, is to be providing MCPS teachers some artistic processes for them to use in their classrooms. And then another amazing thing that also isn't talked about a whole lot is we all know that Missoula has an extraordinary, really a thriving arts community, but Spark has allowed these artists to be gainfully employed. And that's 
really been raising the arts community in this town. So if you are an artist or you know an artist and you may be interested in being part of this, we're also providing training and um, professional development for artists as well as teachers to help artists learn how to share their art forms in the school. And then the last thing I want to say is Ms. Jacqueline Snow is ending her time with us soon at the end of June and she's going to go back into the classroom. She is just a teacher at heart. She's going to move overseas and um, we just want to, if you would join me in a round of applause for her. She's been extraordinary at Spark. Thank you so much. And many of our partnering arts organizations have donated amazing camps in the summer. What, um, what a great way for your kids to continue these sorts of experiences. So please bid on some of those camps and make sure you've put your name in for the free drawing as well. And thank you so much for coming. I'm going to introduce the next performance for the night. Um, so the next performance is Storytellers with Mark Moss and Washington students. Mark Moss is executive director of Tell Us Something, a live storytelling event held four times a year at the Wilma here in Missoula. Mark provides story coaching services to all of the storytellers for the live events and, pr and produces a weekly podcast of their stories. He has been teaching storytelling to middle school students in the Missoula Com County Public Schools through Spark for two years now. Please enjoy. This is Mark Moss and the Storytellers. Hello. <laughs> Lucy Johnstone is a sixth grader at Washington Middle School. She's obsessed with musicals. She loves dark chocolate. She loves lavender steamers and pickled jalapenos. Please welcome Lucy Johnstone. Okay, so for spring break, I was in San Pancho, Mexico, which is a little bit outside of Puerto Vallarta. And we were just getting done with a day at the beach, and it was all fun. And we were, and my sister and I were making strawberry pineapple drinks for everyone. So my sister was pouring the pineapple juice, and a little bit spilled off the edge. So she got a paper towel, wiped it up, and the glass fell. My mom just said, "Okay, we'll, I'll clean this up," and you guys just tried to avoid it because we didn't have shoes on. So I was uh, avoiding all of the pieces and I thought I was safe so I was just walking and I felt a little pain so I looked down and saw that this little red area of blood and so I tried to pull out the piece of glass that had gotten stuck there and it turned out I was just pushing it back in. So my mom helped me over to a chair where she tried to take it out, and she wasn't able to. So we went to the clinic, and we brought my aunt, because she's a Spanish teacher, and she speaks really good Spanish. And so when we arrived at the clinic, my mom told the guy at the front desk, we, she has a piece of glass stuck in her foot. And so my mom gave me a piggyback ride over to the bed, and there was this sad lo looking lady next to us and the nurses were dealing with her first and then when they came over to us, um, they just asked my mom a bunch of questions and I had these little sun rashes on my foot so they asked my mom about those, they asked if I was putting enough sunscreen on and then they took the little piece of glass out and it was only this big and we they bandaged up my foot we went outside waited for the uber and all was well thank you 
Thank you, Lucy. I just got bifocals, and they haven't come in yet. So I have to wear cheaters and contacts. Peyton Schuler is 12 years old and a sixth grader at Washington Middle School. She's loved writing since first grade and continues to grow and learn in her writing every day. When she's not writing, she spends her free time training and traveling on a competitive cheerleading team, fly fishing, camping with her family, and hanging out with friends. Please welcome Peyton Schuler. So my story starts at a birthday party. We were at a trampoline park, and by we, I mean the rest of the party, and we were jumping our hearts out. And then I decided to check my phone, because I thought, well, my mom should be picking me up so soon. <laughs> but when I opened my phone, I saw a bunch of mean messages from one of my previous friends that I had started developing a friendship with since the beginning of the year. And at this point, I was quite shocked because I thought we, we were friends. And so for the rest of the party, I guess there was a sleepover and I went. And there were two cars to go to the birthday girl's house because there were so many people. And I was in the car that didn't have the birthday girl in it and once the other car with their birthday girl came home, they had told me that they had received an angry phone call from the girl that was texting me. Let's call her Sally. Sally was making phone calls and telling them to inflict harm against myself and that I am not worth many of things. And that really hurt my feelings. And I told my parents and we contacted the police and now, the, her repercussions are still pending. Thank you. Thank you, Darla. I'm just gonna leave this here. Brendan Labby is a sixth grade student at Washington Middle School. He is a very competitive guy, no matter what the sport, no matter the circumstance, or whatever. He has to win. He thinks it's funny how people think that sixth grade PE is just for fitness. So please welcome Brennan Labby to the stage. Hi. My teacher made up this game called Wiffle Ball Kickball. It's basically what it sounds like, and it just so happens that about uh, a month ago, we were playing it in my third period sixth grade PE class. Like Mark said, I'm a very, uh, I'm a very competitive guy. Um, no matter the circumstance, I have to win. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and take you to the third inning of that game. Um, my team is losing by about 10 points, and uh, it's the third inning of the game, and it's almost uh, the end of the class period. My teacher just announced this would be the last inning. Um, so I, we had two people on first, two people on second, and I was up to bat. At this point in time, I was running all the rules through my head, like um, a rule is if you hit the ball or kick the ball and it's a ceiling, then it's an automatic switch. Um, so the people in the field would become the people uh, that bat. Uh, another rule is uh, if you hit the ball or kick the ball and it, go, and it goes to somebody and they throw it to the teacher before somebody reaches a base, you're out. Um, and then another rule is uh, say there's a stage to my left right here. Uh, if you kick a ball or you hit a ball, 
onto the stage, you would be out because that's where the lunch duties work, and if you hit them, you're screwed. Um, <clears throat> so I was up to bat. I, I, I'm in my stance. So I'm holding the bat. My teacher throws the ball. I watch it. He says a ball outside. I'm thinking, okay, okay. He pitches the next ball. I hit it. It goes straight down the third base line. I tear off for second, and I'm at and and I'm, 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 I'm first, and I'm rounding towards second. And at this point, my, my teammates have all gone home. I'm rounding towards second. I see the ball launch from, from my classmate's hand. So I dive. <clears throat> I hit the ground, and my hand roll, my left hand rolls under me. It crickles and crackles, and I jump up, and it makes a loud pop. I look at my pinky knuckle, my fifth metacarpal, and it's six centimeters back from where it should be. So I yell at my teacher, I think I just broke my hand. I think I should go to the office to get some ice and call my mom. <laughs> so he says, okay. So I tear off for the office. I get some ice on it, they call my mom. My mom comes back to get me. We go uh, to Missoula Bone and Joint. Uh, they put they put a thing on before the surgery, which is the next morning, which that is a completely different story that we do not have time to get into. Um, by the way, my team did win. Thanks. Thanks, Brennan. Everybody's worried about time. I told them they had three minutes to do this. And... Uh, Everybody's been under time. Yeah, I'm so proud of everybody so far. All right, our last storyteller. Sophia McNetty Marsalek is a seventh grader at Washington Middle School. She loves to hike, bike, and ski. When she's not outside, you might find her at the mask studio Climbing aerial silks, please welcome Sophia McNenny Marsalek. So it was about two or three years ago when my mom and I decided to go to the mall. Just a mother daughter outing, gonna do some shopping. So we head over, we do our shopping. But part of this excursion was that I was going to get my hair cut. Now, let me just say, I love getting my hair cut. It's new, it's fresh, I don't know what they do to it, but it's so soft. So I'm super excited. I'm going to get my hair cut. So we head over to Regis in the mall, and I get sat down in the chair. And at this point, my hair was right about to my collarbone, and I was looking for a little more than a trim, but no more than an inch off. So they start cutting away at my hair, and what I didn't know at the time is that the hairstylist was really new. So my mom heads over to Cafe Dolce to get her coffee, and when she comes back, she looks at me in the mirror, and her eyes are this big. So. I don't know why, but she was pretty shocked because this new girl had already cut off three inches. My mom's talking to her. That looks a little short. I can't really see it. I think it's fine. It wasn't fine. She starts cutting at the front, and it's lopsided, choppy, and short. Before I know it, the manager has to come out to fix this mess of a haircut. The next thing I know, I look over at this new girl, and she's crying. She and everyone else there knows she has messed up. So the manager cleans it up, fixes it, and at this point, I have an A-line bob over four inches off, and I have been sitting in that chair for over an hour. So we get out of the shop, I look at my mom, and now I'm crying. Of course, I've been holding up all this emotion. I'm devastated. I have lost a part of me. So 
My mom takes one look at me. She marches right back in there, and when she comes back out, she says to me, no charge for that haircut. <laughs> That's a good thing, right? I pull myself together, we get out of the mall, go to the car, and I'm crying again. Devastated, just so sad. So my mom decides instead of going home, we'll head over to my grandparents' house. And my grandma's home, and she makes everything better like all grandmas do. And she says to me, the only difference between a haircut you like and a haircut you don't like is only a couple of months. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you, all of you, for listening to their stories. Thank you to Lucy. Thank you to Peyton. Thank you to Brennan. And thank you, Sophia. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. That was fabulous. I don't hear a phone. <laughs> Just music, <laughs> Teresa. Hey, Spark works with artists and arts organizations in the Missoula community to bring arts programming in all forms, including visual arts, drama, dance, music, creative writing, and media arts. All of the amazing arts programs happening through Spark in the schools is made possible because of these partners and their expertise and partnerships with the University of Montana and the City of Missoula. The crucial element of funding for Spark Arts programming is provided through a sustained partnership with Missoula County Public Schools for K through 5 arts integration and generous support from the Dennis and Philip Phyllis Washington Foundation, Log Jam Presents, the Montana Arts Council, Allegiance, First Interstate Bank, Stockman Bank, the Engelhard Foundation, the Julius J. Franchini Foundation, and thank you so much again for your support. And now, since it's not possible for the whole community, to make it into the schools to observe a full arts residency. Impossible is a strong word. I think it's possible. The Roxy has collaborated with Spark to create a film showing how an arts integration residency is developed. This film, The Art of Creating a Spark, residency features Chief Charlo students and teachers and teaching artists Rosie Ayers and Kate Crouch. Enjoy this peek into the classroom work that happens with Spark throughout the year. Spark is a community-based collective impact working together to provide equitable access to the arts for all students. They take people who have had experience working with kids and they bring them into your school and it's like a win-win. The really primary focus of Spark programs in Missoula is arts integration taking an art form and another content area in school and merging those together so that students are learning skills and standards in both areas. We're looking um, as much as we can to continue to grow the arts in, in any way we can and there's so many different forms so I think the exciting thing for our staff is what fits our kids, what fits our building, what fits our classroom and that's where that exciting innovative imaginative process starts. Theater is so collaborative yeah. and confidence building and when a spark residency is being planned the first step is for the teaching teams at the schools to decide which art form they want to come in which teaching artists they're going to have come in and we have a directory on the spark website where they can look and see what's available and we work with about 40 teaching artists and arts organizations in the community so there are a lot of options when we met Rosie for the first time it just seemed like she was someone who we gravitated toward. I sent uh, Kevin and the other teachers a list of the things that I have been teaching with the fourth grade and they got really excited about several of the ideas. And Rosie ran a few kind of like general exercises, acting exercises with us and it was just we had such a good time that we thought well this would be perfect for the kids. 
So when we sit down and I say, what has worked in the past for this lesson with you? And what have you hated about teaching watershed, for example? Man, so origins so. of water, watershed. Integrating that with theater, usually what I do uh, with that particular lesson is have the kids write origin stories or create origin stories about oh. something in their own environment. Great. And from there, I can start to take those ideas along with the Common Core curriculum that they need to hit, their learning targets, and start to develop a lesson. I think the speaking and listening one is huge. What's our end goal? And what's the best way to give all the learners a relationship with that information? The first session tends to be stronger in the art form because that's often a new way of learning and an experiencing school for the students. Can anybody tell me what one of the things is that we like to do or use as a tool in theater? Yes, movement. Our movements. And I start to give them two to three words of vocabulary within the theater language. Um, we were using tableau. Yeah. Tableau and pantomime. Pantomime. Uh, our voices and expressions of our face. Everyone put your eggs on your head. Let's put two on there. Because I'm going to blow your mind. One, two, three, explosion. What is the last tool that we like to use? Imagination. Our imaginations. And what they don't realize, which is really cool about integrated arts, is that I already have the vocabulary list of what we're learning about in our science and social study curriculum, and I'm peppering those in. Some sort of tale that had to do with erosion. No, you're sorry. Be like this. I'm hard. Be like this. We did uh, the erosion as a little play. So we have rocks and wind and water. What do you guys? Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end, a person would tell us what our play was about. Ginger, you were flowing onto Mike, which was destroying him. And um, Taylor, you were destroying Jaden by being windy. Could so. you use another word besides destroy? A road. Oh! oh. I was Thank not expecting brilliant. science in um, theater, and I thought that was that's really cool to learn about that stuff while you're having fun. Perhaps they wanted to break apart. They wanted to change and become somebody new. They don't really expect it to be connected to their other curriculum, and then there's sort of that aha moment where they realize, we just learned something about science. By the end of the lesson, Every single day they will have had interaction with me with their academia curriculum and their theatrical curriculum. We saw what erosion was and how it worked and then we made like these pictures that moved and we didn't use talking that showed how erosion works. Yes, like I had a lot of fun. <laughs> After each session, we sat down and um, debriefed about how things went. Should we continue going down this direction, or, or should we, and, and how should we build off that? In the idea of collaborating with the, with the teacher, that communication and respect are two of our biggest allies. Give a small round of applause for Mr. Brown. I felt very hands-on during this process. She was able to incorporate us as as staff. I'd be standing back there and suddenly, and what do you say you, Mr. Cashman, and suddenly I'm part of this improv um, game, you know? And I think that really, it just made everybody feel at ease and let their guard down and have fun. Each of those sessions built to this culminating session today, which gave the students an opportunity to perform in front of one another. We always create a culminating event that has some aspect of audience. With the lower grades, I try not to make it a huge pressure. We're not trying to make a perfect product where everybody says the right line and everybody wears the right costume. We want them to create something, and that's what makes integrated art, is they get um, academia and arts, and then they create something that is theirs. Our idea initially was to get the students more kinesthetically involved in the changes that our watershed has experienced over the last century. By the third session, it was clear that um, the beaver focal point was where we wanted to go with this because the students were having so much fun with it. We were really enjoying it and Beaver tied it all together. We did 
the final bits of our tableaus and pantomimes with our dialogue. As a hunter, I used to love to eat beaver tail, but now that it's illegal, I, li I like the dessert from Canada called the beaver tail. Guess I can't hunt anymore. I was absolutely amazed at all the things that the kids had uh, learned, you know, without a pen and pencil in front of them. So, we uh, learned about, like, how to act and how not to be scared. Beavers are nocturnal, and their kits float um, when they're born. I learned that beavers can, like, say, submerged in water for 15 minutes. When you see something and touch something and hear something all at once, I think it helps you to remember it longer. I just like moving my body. That's what I like about Spark. I know, I know why I, I like it so much, really. Usually I don't get like normal math and science and it was an easier way to like sort of have, have fun with it. It allows our kids to create and to collaborate, and it's a different venue for our kids to work together and problem solve and uh, come up with new ways to express themselves. So it, um, that pathway of creativity is big for our kids. Then the final step is um, an evaluation that the teaching artists and the teachers have a conversation about how they think it went, what they do differently in the future, what they plan on using as they go forward, and a written evaluation so that we can keep improving our programming. When it comes to trying to gauge what the impact of these residencies are, a lot of times I look at what do I want them to remember when they're in sixth or seventh grade? What would they remember about this unit? Rocks! The rocks are being broken down. Even though that session with Rosie took place a number of months ago now, we're really still um, it really still comes up daily in conversation, and you can just tell that it left a lasting impression on students. Hello, everybody! Hello. That feeling. Eyes and nose, oh, Miss Rose! Of being able to show something they created by themselves. In a few years, that's what lasts. That feeling that we were confident. Do you remember the candy? It was, it was the, the soft what? underbelly of bark. And we created something someone else witnessed it is something that stays with someone forever. that. Good, good. Hello! Hi everybody, my name is Rosie Ayers. I'm a theater teaching artist and you may recognize me from very famous films such as the one you just saw. <laughs> good job. Um, we are going to need a lot more clapping than what you just gave us because what... Oh hey! Look at that, you're already delivering. You must have been a good student in school. Uh, my dearest teaching partner, Amy Lala, poke your head out, Amy. Hey, hey. She's wrangling all the fifth graders backstage. Uh, she and I had, got to do a couple of really cool residencies this year on the American Revolution, Hamilton style. We rapped and did amazing parodies. Your children are really great rappers. We have loved working with them. And we're going to show you a few of our historical raps because nothing says George Washington like beatboxing with the Beastie Boys. Am I right? Oh, that was a good weak laugh. Um, first off tonight, we have our friends Grace and Kale. Come on out, you guys. And their amazing helper, Ma uh, Maureen. Come on out, you guys. Whoop, whoop. These guys are... Uh... <laughs> the name of this piece is Dump It In. We've got uh, DJ I Muzak in the back. Everybody wave at our DJ. Woo woo. Kale, you ready? You want to yeah. test the mic? Get up real close. Test it. Say testing. Dating. Bam. Okay. DJ, take it away. Okay. All right. So in the 
town tonight. People are mine. Taxis to be paid to the king tonight. People are dead. We don't think it's fair that taxis are due. We are dead. We were buried are due. Don't pay the king, don't pay the crown. We deserve to be treated equally. Don't pay a dime, don't pay a cent. We want the world to hear us vent. Don't beat in, don't beat in. Dump it into the sea. Dump it in, dump it in. Dump the tea till we are free. Thank you guys. Nothing is more riveting than the Boston Tea Party. We spent weeks working on tableaus and beatboxing and figuring out how to move our bodies on a beat. Um, some of these guys chose to do parodies of songs that existed like Let It Go, right? Dump It In. Uh, some of them chose to do hardcore rapping because clearly I'm a hardcore rapper and they wanted to follow in my footsteps. I heard you laughing, that's right. Up next, um, from Cold Springs, those guys were from Hawthorne, by the way, is our friends Mary and Ashley. Come on out, ladies. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. I got two microphones. You want one? You probably want one, too. Okay, <laughs> what is the title of your piece? Um, we don't have one. Untitled. Excellent. You ready, DJ? Eyes, Muzak? Here you go. Ready? Ready? They've got dance moves. Come up. Okay. Oh my gosh. Interesting, King George III and Parliament believe that colonists need a tax on tea. So we jumped on the ship, cut open the tea. Look how savage colonists can really be. Skies and mohawks when they pull up on the docks. Men are watching, but nobody talks. Boston Harbor, a teapot tonight, December 16th, but I'm ready to fight King George and his taxes. So tell the mohawks to bring out their axes. They're weaker than tea, I'm stronger than coffee, they're no match for me. We're gonna stretch them like toffee. Fabulous. Stretch them like toffee. Those are original. You guys did know that, right? These guys are not professionals. They've never been on the Wilma stage before. It's pretty daunting up here. I think they're doing an amazing job. Up next with a little freestyle rap is Hudson. Hudson, come on out, buddy! Only 
two years of education did not like to speak out in front of people no 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 <laughs> Refrigerator. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Gucci. If you, if you know what I mean. So I like to shout out. Okay, never mind. Give a shout out when you get back to it. Well, to my mom and my dad. I can't see them because it's too dark, but they're lit. You can beat him, he kick your butt, no. Ben Franklin in the revolution, there is no solution. He is just the greatest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben Franklin flew the kite, out came the lightning rod. Ben is truly a patriot to his country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Died in 1798. Great year to die. Died a good man and died a smart man. Okay, that's it, that's it. <laughs> One thing we worked a lot on was rolling with the punches, being able to hop in and out, take a mistake and make it into something more amazing. And his dance moves clearly show that he's got the groove going on. Uh, up next, we have a cool uh, brain connection. Lin-Manuel Miranda was the great genius behind Hamilton, the American Revolution style um, hip hop musical that has just swept our nation and swept the Tonys and he got the Nobel Peace Prize. He did some amazing things for theater as well as education and arts in general. He also did a little film called Moana recently and this piece is from Moana. So here we come. Ade Adara, come on out, girl. You got this. with our friend Sophie. Come on out, girl. You got this. She wants to give a little dedication to our show. I'd like to give my dedication to my family right there. OK. 
can't see him, but... Benjamin Franklin, top of the rank, and I go to court for the American Revolution. I'm in it, I'm out, I'll come without a doubt. I help out them soldiers fighting for freedom. We sit down and rise to the seat, and I'm a scientist. I made electricity. Those silly vices wouldn't be here for work for me. Check me out. I'm a scientist, inventor, Freemason, activist, more. Can you beat that door? My wife, Deborah she is a lead. She helps me out with all my beasts. Well done is better than well said. I used to call that out back in my days, January 17, 1706. Two. April 17, 1790. I wrote for Mitch's out like like a box. See me standing, my name getting caught. I'm Benjamin Franklin all around the globe. I'm up there now, but I'm strong like a bull. Woo woo! Right on, great job, honey. Excellent. Up next with round two of Vanilla Ice, yay 90s kids, right? We got Maxime. Maxime, come on out. Yeah, he's wearing the hat. He's got the blazer. You got the style. And now you've got the stage. Um, I'd say that I... I The founder of the government, the man of the fundament, the ambassador of France, called ambassador of trance. The man of independence and the fan of tendance, Britain with the taxes keeping offense, which is really making me tense. Revolution giving me a head convulsion, which is really just repulsion. Fire them guns, shoot them cannons, keeping them at bay while making them panic. We all young to fight them huns, going rapid while being avid. I am a beast while feasting on the red coats, which is really making me pet coat. Yo, let's kick it, it's John, I'm in this house, living up to a blouse. Making bacon while faking the British who really just have some fetish. When I work in the five, being alive, making me pride in this hive. Yeah, the lobster's eating crap in the ocean, begging for notion. Sever that rope, give it to the Pope, because I can't cope in the smoke. Well, I'm being foul, so I should probably go out. Right on, excellent. Fabulous. DJ Isaac, we have a little change. We're gonna bring Adara back out. She's gonna try again because that's what we do best, right?
my country. I know they've been trying to get us to pay their taxes, but we're refusing. Every time I shoot with my gun, I get stronger and more prepared so that I know when I can shoot my enemy down. To the line where the blood leaks down, it hurts me. And the British know that we're paying no more. I am a dangerous colonist fighting the British, and one day I'll know. going to end. I cried backstage. I did. Um, theater not only teaches us resilience, but it also teaches us empathy, which is one of the biggest lessons we all need to learn, whether we're doing it through math or science or social studies. So thank you again for allowing us to come into your schools and work with your children and teach them about that amazing place inside of them that sometimes they don't even know is there. Okay, I'm gonna cry. Um, up next, we have Reese singing the cup song, but historical style. have an amazing trio, so we're going to need two of these great microphones. From Hawthorne Elementary School, ladies, come on out. We've got Cadence and Justice and Stacy. Woohoo! They all need doing a rap, we're doing more of a song. <laughs> and we'd like to give thanks to some people that helped us, like Tia over in the corner. Stand up, Tia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really close. Miss Griggs, um, our music teacher, and some other people. And we're Miss Amy and Miss Rosie. Enjoy. <laughs> Disease. 
tricks, aren't we? Excellent. Ha, ha, ha. Need one of these. Up next, uh, we're down to our last final two. So we're almost out of here, you guys. You guys have been awesome and patient. Thank you for amazing rounds of um, applause and laughter. Miranda, you want to come on out, my dear? She's got some great moves, and I want to make sure that our microphone is in the right place. Mm, she's good. <laughs> I did it. Did it. Stabbed up to join the rebellion against England. Led raids against the British, slyer than a fox, that man. General Washington led us through the revolution and old king sitting on the throne this saying that he probably should just give up he became the first president as he rose from the ranks and he told everybody that they weren't part of Britain no more no more America's victory. Our last act is certainly a classy one. Andreas, come on out, honey. He may have a few backup dancers by the end of it. There's no, nobody can help themselves but to dance every time this man starts rapping. Andreas, you ready for this? No. <laughs> You're supposed to say yes. Fine, yes. <laughs> All right, Isaac, drop that beat. Takes us a while to get into it, so you can drop it now, right? Okay. Hi. This thing is super cool. Test it. Hi. Hi. I'd like to give a shout out to Hudson backstage and my dad, and my grandpa, and Riley. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna pee my pants. <laughs> Thank you, whoever that was. I ain't been liking the colonists. Well, maybe a little baby, but I hate the patriots. I know when you write me, boy, I don't always write back. So I guess a lot of your bodies are going to be in body bags. I know this thing that you know it. All these oysters are coming at me. I wonder who throws it. They can't see my vision, boy. They must be out of focus. That's a real hot throne, boy. I wonder who sits in it. Oh, man. OK. Hey, them colors go away. Always sound like clouds around. They look like circus show. Like, this is not a war, either. These are just some throwaways. So when the war begins, it's going to be on a snow day. Hey, boy, it's good, and he knows it. He don't say it, he shows it. <laughs> It, I'm in mean, just coasting, getting so ever I know I know it. I got a selfie with Ben. I just say never showed it. And I'm in my happy place posted. I am proud since 1776. I ain't cried since <laughs> my bad, like six flags. And your kingdom is no fun. You can come back to mine though. And find the, be going on a high note. I spy with my little eye. 
crown that I can get cause it don't get too many likes A diamond ruby crown I can get into my life Wait, that means forever, ever, hold them, never mind Oh, I, I spy with my little eye A crown that I can get cause it don't get too many likes A diamond ruby crown I can get into my life Wait, that means forever, ever, hold them, never mind Oh, I, I spy with my little eye I spy, I spy with my little eye Oh, I, I spy with my little eye I spy, I spy, I spy with my little eye Oh, I Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. We had a fabulous time. We had twice as much fun in our classrooms. So if you can imagine for us, this is just the highlight getting to stand under the, under the lights. These are a little better than the fluorescent lights at school. So thank you guys again for coming to this amazing show. I'm going to hand it back over to Teresa and Allie. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just a reminder, the art gallery raffle auction is closing. You've got like five minutes to get your final bids in. You might have ten. Ten. You might have ten. Um, thank you all for joining us to celebrate another year with SPARK, Arts Ignites Learning in Missoula Classrooms. SPARK is working to sustain and grow these programs, and there are many ways you can help. In addition to purchasing tickets or bidding on auction items, please talk with our volunteers about all the ways you can support, support SPARK. We have wonderful prizes donated for tonight's event. Partner organizations have given us these gifts of more wonderful opportunities for kids. Now it's time to make a final bid for an arts summer camp or arts basket. Thank you to the following people and organizations for donating. It's going to be hard to follow the wrapping that just went down, but I'm going to try and do this as fast as I can. Missoula Children's Theater, the Zootown Arts Community Collaborative, Missoula County Public Schools, Missoula Art Museum, Teresa Waldorf's Theater Camp, Tangled Tones, Tabitha Beer, Jennifer Ogden, Aria Berry, Kinetic Body Missoula, Missoula Clay Studio, Domino's Pizza, Ballet Arts Academy, Roxy Film Academy. Help me out on this one. And Janana Vieira, Vieira Marquez. 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 Okay. Mar Marquez. So take the next 10 minutes to view the Gallery of Visual Arts and to place your bids, purchase raffle tickets for the Amazing Arts Summer Camps, and other arts opportunities. And then Jacqueline will come up here and announce the winner. Thanks so much. Thank you.